In this lecture, we're going to talk about cell growth, division, and reproduction. So we know that cells can grow larger, and if cells get too large, it becomes less efficient because it takes a long time, if you have a cell, for nutrients to make it into the nucleus from the outside of the cell if it gets too big. Smaller cells are more efficient because it takes less time because there's less distance to travel for nutrients to reach the nucleus and the rest of the cell. So if cells get too big, they do need to divide. Like we just mentioned, large cells have a harder time surviving, and that's because of something called surface area to volume ratio. So here we have two little cells, right? One is a little bit larger than the other. And the reason that surface, to, um, surface area to volume ratio matters is that when nutrients try to get into the cell and to feed all of the different cell parts, it's much more efficient if the cell is small. So we only have this distance to travel to get to the center of the cell in a small cell, but in a larger cell, it has to travel a lot farther. And so because things get into cells through diffusion, cells that are small can get fed by diffusion much more quickly than cells that are large. So when a cell gets too big and too inefficient, then it needs to divide. In addition to becoming large, cells can also divide because the organism that they are a part of needs to grow in size. And in order to grow in size, people, for example, need to increase the number of cells in their body. Cells can also divide in order for an organism to reproduce. And remember, reproduction is just organisms needing to make more of their own kind or their own species in order to keep the species from going extinct. There's two major types of reproduction. There's asexual reproduction, and that occurs when there's only one parent and they make a clone of themselves. And then there's also sexual reproduction when you've got two parents and they mix the DNA from both parents to make their offspring. First, we'll talk a little bit more in detail about asexual reproduction. So this is when you have a single parent. That parent could be a single-celled organism, like an amoeba or something, or it could be a multicellular organism, like a hydra or something, but both of those organisms can reproduce asexually. So there's only one parent, it copies all of its DNA to make its offspring, and that offspring is a clone, or genetically identical, to the parent. So remember, clones are organisms that are genetically identical to their parents. That means that they have the same DNA sequence. There are more than one type of asexual reproduction. So one of those types is called fission. Fission is when um, a parent separates into two individuals that are about the same size. So this is how it happens a lot of times when cells or single-celled organisms reproduce asexually. So you start with one parent, they make a copy of their DNA, and then they pinch in half, and then you get two organisms that are identical to the original parent cell. This happens to be a picture of bacterial cell division. This can also happen in single-celled organisms that are eukaryotes. Another name for this process in bacteria is called binary fission. Another type of asexual reproduction is called fragmentation. So this is when the body of a multicellular organism breaks into several pieces, and that allows um, each piece to grow into a new individual. So starfish are able to do this. If you break an arm off a starfish, that starfish can grow its arm back, and the arm that broke off can also grow into a new starfish. Another type of asexual reproduction is called budding. So an example is this organism with the hydra. It occurs when a new individual splits off of the existing individual. So we can kind of figure that out. So this is the adult hydra. And then it's got these tentacles here, and those are what it uses to capture food. And then you can see that the new hydra is this little guy here. And so that's the baby hydra that is a clone of the adult growing out of the side of the adult. And when it's mature enough, it will break off into its own individual. Sexual reproduction requires two parents. So that's why it's different from asexual reproduction. And both parents contribute what's called a haploid gamete. Those haploid gametes contain 50% of the DNA that is found in the normal somatic cell. So if a normal cell has 46 chromosomes in humans, a haploid gamete has 23 chromosomes, 
because it's half of the normal amount. Those two haploid gametes fuse to form a diploid zygote. The offspring that results from sexual reproduction has traits from both parents because they have DNA from both parents. Um, so sexual reproduction does a better job of increasing genetic diversity because it mixes genes up more quickly than asexual reproduction does because asexual reproduction generally just clones the existing individuals. Next we'll talk about DNA and chromosomes. So DNA is the genetic material that parents pass to their op offspring and they are in structures called chromosomes. A chromosome is simply a long strand of DNA and then that DNA is wrapped around small proteins called histones and that allows the DNA to be coiled up and more easily packed into the nucleus. So it coils up kind of like a phone cord if you've ever seen an old school phone that has a cord um, and that way it takes up less space. When it's coiled up it's called chromatin and it's composed of thousands of genes. So both of these pictures show uncoiled chromatin, so DNA is kind of stretched out. And you can see here we have like, these are the histones, those are those little proteins that the DNA is wrapped around. And then the DNA also strings between those proteins, keeping them all together. So you've got long strands of DNA, kind of looks like beads on a string, um, whether it's wrapped around the occasional histone, and that just helps to keep the DNA organized. So you get some idea of how much DNA is in a cell. This is just a fraction of the DNA that is in a nucleus. Here you can see that the zoomed in picture is just a small part of what's in the nucleus of a cell. So cells contain a lot of DNA because there's a lot of information stored in DNA that's needed to make an organism. When DNA is fully coiled up, then it looks like this. So this is a chromosome, and this chromosome happens to be ready for cell division. So you can see there's two halves. So on this side is one half of the chromosome, and then on this side is the other half. Those two halves are exact copies of each other, and they're called sister chromatids. In human cells, we have more than one chromosome in the nucleus. So in humans, somatic cells have 46 chromosomes. So this is a picture of all of the chromosomes from one cell. So each of these structures is an individual chromosome. These ones are, in fact, doubled because they're getting ready to divide. Um, but they can be stained so that you can differentiate them from, from each other because they're different sizes and they also have a different striped or banding pattern. Each strand of DNA that makes up a chromosome is composed of many different segments of DNA that are called genes. So each gene in your chromosomes is the code for one protein. And so each protein has a different function. It could be structural and make things like collagen or carotene for your hair, or it could make globular proteins or functional proteins that are like enzymes. When a cell is getting ready to divide, it needs to make a copy of the DNA. When you have a copy of the DNA and makes a chromosome, that has two sister chromatids. So you can see here, there's one, two sister chromatids, and they are exactly identical copies of DNA because they are the same information. That information is eventually going to go into two separate cells when a cell divides. Um, but it's two halves of a doubled chromosome, and it's formed when DNA is replicated or copied before cell division and before it coils up. And so the structure, these two sister chromatids are held together by this structure called the centromere. You can see that there. And that holds them together and keeps them organized until a cell is ready to divide. Each human cell also has homologous chromosomes. These are two separate chromosomes that contain the genes for the same genetic characteristics, but they are not identical. That's important because these chromosomes come from your parents. So you'll always have one chromosome that comes from your father from each pair. And then the other chromosome in the pair comes from your mother. And so all of your genetic information comes from both parents. Half of the genetic information or one homologous chromosome from each pair comes from your mom. The other homologous chromosome in each pair comes from your dad. In organisms that reproduce sexually, there are two different types of cells. One of those types of cells are called somatic cells. 
those are generally the body cells. So your skin cells, muscle cells, nerve cells, epithelial cells, um, all of those different types of cells are somatic cells. They are what's called diploid. And you can abbreviate diploid with this abbreviation, 2N. And it means that you have two of each kind of chromosome. So you have pairs of each chromosome or pairs of those homologous chromosomes. In a somatic cell in humans, there are 46 chromosomes in each somatic cell. It can also be expressed as 23 pairs of chromosomes. And you know that there's still 46 chromosomes because if you have 23 pairs of socks, for example, you have 46 socks total. The other type of cell that is found in organisms that reproduce sexually are called gametes. So those are sex cells. Those are sperm cells in males and egg cells in females. And these types of cells are haploid, which means they have one of each kind of chromosome. So a human gamete has 23 chromosomes total and no pairs. If you have two chromosomes that get together that are gametes, they're both one N, right? Those two cells, and this could be like a sperm cell and an egg cell, when they fuse together during sexual reproduction, then you get this structure. This is a zygote or a fertilized egg, and it is 2N or diploid. And if you want to see a picture of all of the chromosomes that are found in one human cell, that picture is called a karyotype. So a karyotype is just a photograph of the chromosomes that are found in one human cell. So that's what this picture is. Remember, there's 23 pairs of chromosomes. You can see here that they're numbered. And then total, there's 46 chromosomes because there's two in each pair. And if you have a female, she's going to have two X chromosomes in her karyotype. And if you have a male, they will have an X chromosome and a Y chromosome in their karyotype.